If you're setting up a WordPress website for yourself, you're probably confused by all the different hosting types. There's ones that are free, ones that say they're managed, and there's even ones that cost more than $1,000 per month. Which one should you choose? Well, if you're a beginner, just go with the cheapest shared hosting option, right? Well, actually, the cheaper shared hosting option might be good for some users, but it's not for everyone. So in this video, I'll be breaking down the different types of hosting and comparing the differences between them so I can help you decide which one would be best for you. Hi, I'm Yaz and this is Brainstorm Force. We create educational content about everything WordPress. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new uploads. And if you want some extra help choosing the best hosting type for yourself, make sure you watch till the end of the video because I've got a little bit of a bonus to help you make that choice. Before we dive into the different types of hosting, I really want you to understand what your requirements are when it comes to a hosting service. To help you figure this out, I've got a few questions ready for you. One, how much traffic are you expecting for your website? Will you be experiencing very low daily traffic or are you expecting to have consistently high traffic? Two, what is your budget? How much are you willing to spend on your hosting plan per month? There are many different price ranges, so it's important to figure out what you're willing to spend. Three, what's your technical level? Are you a complete beginner without any experience or are you happy to navigate while learning through online tutorials? That's how I basically learned everything I know about WordPress. Or do you have great technical knowledge with coding experience as well? Four, what type of assistance will you be needing? Will you need assistance installing your WordPress website? Will you be needing assistance managing your hosting service or server? There are hosting types that offer this kind of service for you, so it's important to know what kind of help you'll be needing. And if you know the answers to these questions, it can help you better identify the features that can benefit you as we go through the rest of this video. Now we can finally dive into the different types of hosting. I'm really excited to walk you through them, so without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have shared hosting, and this is where your website will be shared on a server with many other websites. Like sharing an apartment with roommates, you have your own space in that apartment, but the actions of your roommates will have a direct effect on the quality of your life. In the same way, if a website that shares the same server as you experiences really high traffic, it can end up making your website a lot slower. And if a neighboring website crashes, it will take your website down with it as well. And something else to consider about shared hosting again is because your website is on a shared server with a bunch of other websites, if another neighboring website experiences a cyber attack and or any sort of security threat, your website is compromised along with it as well. And it doesn't matter how big your website is or how much traffic it gets, it's still compromised. With that said, shared hosting is the most affordable hosting type out there, starting at just $3 to $12 per month. It's also the best hosting type for beginners and users looking to start their first website. I think that shared hosting would be best if you're starting a small niche blog, or even if you have a small business and want that online presence for yourself. A great shared hosting service that we recommend is SiteGround. They're incredibly reliable, they're affordable, and they provide excellent customer support. And some other alternatives include GreenGeek and Hostinger as well. And here's a little extra tip from me if you're considering purchasing a shared hosting service for yourself. A lot of these websites tend to show you very lucrative first year price for your plan, but then every subsequent year they hit you with the actual fee that's a little bit more expensive than what you paid in that first year. This can be a little bit misleading and surprising if you weren't aware of this when you purchased your plan. So just be aware of that. And another thing to watch out for is that the same websites might try to upsell you on a lot of other features that you might not need. So be careful if those two things and only pay for the features that you want. Next, we move on to VPS hosting and VPS stands for virtual private server. And this is where your website is hosted on a server that's specifically allocated just for you. VPS is also kind of shared in a way because your virtual private server, despite being allocated just for you, it still sits on a hardware that's shared by many other different servers. With a VPS plan, you can start at just $20 to $40 per month. You not only have your own allocated server, but you have a lot of freedom to configure it however you want with the exact amount of resources you need. And because you have dedicated resources guaranteed just for you and you don't have to share them with other users, like on a shared hosting plan, you have a more powerful server for your websites. And VPS is also more secure than shared hosting because your server is now isolated from the other servers. These features make VPS the best value for money among the different hosting types. Thinking back to that apartment analogy where a shared hosting was like living in an apartment with roommates, having a VPS is like buying a condo for yourself. And you have more space and freedom to do whatever you want with that space rather than living in a shared apartment with roommates. However, despite having a condo to yourself, owning one means that you have more responsibilities as well. For example, if anything goes wrong with the plumbing or you make an accidental hole in the wall, you're most likely gonna be the one that has to fix those in your own condo. In the same way, the added freedom with VPS comes with a lot more responsibility. You must configure and set up everything yourself with VPS and at the same 
same time, if something goes wrong or any issues pop up, you're the one that's responsible for fixing them. This makes VPS a little bit less beginner friendly compared to shared hosting because you need to be a little bit more tech savvy and have that technical knowledge to run VPS. However, if you still want the power of VPS, but you don't want the added responsibility, or if you don't have that technical knowledge to run VPS, you can opt for managed VPS hosting. Managed VPS hosting is where the hosting provider will assist you and handle a lot of that responsibility for you. We'll cover managed hosting a little bit later on in this video. We recommend VPS hosting if you have a growing website with many plugins and heavy functionality. Here at Brainstorm Force, we like to use VPS for most of our websites through RunCloud which is like a control panel for VPS that makes it easier to manage our server. And some VPS hosting services to consider are Hostinger, DreamHost, and Bluehost. These are all great options. And now we have dedicated hosting. And this is where you have a whole physical server dedicated just for you. This takes things a step further than VPS hosting, and you'll now be responsible for almost everything regarding your server. It's kind of like building your own custom car with the exact parts and performance you need rather than just going to the store and buying one off the shelf. With dedicated hosting, you'll have complete freedom to install the OS you want and configure the hardware to your exact needs. Dedicated hosting plans are a lot more secure than VPS and shared hosting because now your server is a physical isolated server by itself. And usually with these dedicated hosting plans, you do get 24 seven support as well. Think of dedicated hosting as like buying yourself a house rather than an apartment or condo. This way you're detached from everyone else and you have that privacy and freedom to modify whatever you want about your home. And the same is true with dedicated hosting. For sure you have the most freedom out of the different hosting types, but along with that freedom comes the most responsibility as well. With your dedicated server, you have to build it from the ground up, including the operating system, the server software, as well as all the maintenance and repairs that come along with it. This requires the user to be much more technically capable than even with VPS. And as you might have guessed, dedicated hosting is also the most expensive hosting type, starting at $150 and going up to $250 or even more per month. And another point to consider is that if you're considering upgrading your server to accommodate for a growing website or business, you're sort of confined to the limits allowed by that server. And if you want to improve upon the resources allowed by that server, you'll probably have to move to a larger separate server. And this can be a little bit inconvenient. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably going to be a beginner level user looking to set up a small or intermediate website for yourself. And if that's the case, I can't recommend dedicated hosting for you. Dedicated hosting will be perfect if you have a very specific use case like you're hosting game servers, or if you have a really heavy media streaming website, for example. Otherwise, you're probably better off looking at other hosting types. And now we move on to a hosting type we briefly touched upon early in the video, and that's managed hosting. Managed hosting is when the hosting provider takes on a lot of the technical tasks related to your website and hosting and manages them for you. This can include updates, backups, and server maintenance, and some even install WordPress for you. And if we were to look at it with the same apartment analogy we've used in the rest of the video, managed hosting would be like renting out your condo or apartment, then hiring a property manager to manage everything for you. This way you get to earn while renting out your property while someone else manages the tasks and details for you, so you can kick back and relax and have that peace of mind. Managed hosting is like an add-on to your typical hosting types, so you can have managed shared hosting, managed VPS hosting, and you can also have managed cloud hosting, to name a few. And plans start as low as $10 per month, and this can vary depending on the type of hosting, the resources you require, and other features included in that plan. And you might remember me mentioning managed VPS hosting earlier in the video, and this is where you get the power of regular VPS without having to manage and maintain everything by yourself. Similarly, you can have more basic hosting types that's managed too. A managed WordPress hosting is probably what I'd recommend for most general users. This is because you'd need minimal knowledge or experience to get started with your website. And rather than doing all the tedious and time consuming tasks yourself, they'll all be done for you so you can focus on the important things like your content. And managed hosting is not only just for beginners, no. Even if you have the technical knowledge to install and set up your own WordPress website, or if you can manage your own VPS hosting, you really have to ask yourself if it's worth your time to be doing all that yourself. Say you're a content creator, wouldn't you want to spend your time creating more amazing content or connecting with your audience? Or if you're a business owner, would you not want to spend time growing your business instead of focusing your time on updating the plugins on your WordPress website? We already know that managed shared hosting is a great option for beginners and managed VPS hosting offers great performance. And alternatively, we also have the option to go from managed cloud hosting as well, which we'll cover next. A managed hosting service that we recommend is Kinsta. 
but alternatively, you could look at Nexus or WP Engine as well. These are all really great options. Lastly, we move on to cloud hosting. And this is where your website is hosted on a network of web servers rather than on one physical server. There are some benefits to this because having a physical server does have its limitations. If you can think of shared hosting as a physical store, imagine it being the smallest store possible with only a few parking spots outside. And moving up from that to VPS, imagine VPS being an even bigger store with even more parking spots outside accommodating for more customers. But then if you consider managed hosting, this would be where you pull up to a store in your car and there'd be a valet ready to park your car for you. And now coming into cloud hosting, this would be where you have unlimited or infinite amount of parking spots to accommodate as many users or customers that you want. Think of it like an expandable store that can accommodate as many customers that are going to come and visit. One advantage of having your website on a cloud hosting rather than on a physical server is that you have better uptime. On a physical server, if it ever crashes, you're sort of stuck and you'll have to wait for it to get fixed before you can have your website up and running. This can be very inconvenient and damaging to your business. For example, if you have an e-commerce store, the longer the website is down, the more money you'll lose. But with cloud hosting, if one server crashes, it will go ahead and connect to another server and will make up for the one that crashed. This way, the visitors to your website will have a seamless experience and you won't have to worry about losing money or customers due to downtime. With cloud hosting, it's very easy to scale the resources allocated to your website. With VPS and dedicated hosting, you do have the option to upgrade your resources to your exact needs, but you are constrained to the limitations of your physical hardware. You can't really rely on these type of hosting services because a sudden spike in traffic on your website could use up all the resources you have. On the other hand, with cloud hosting, because it uses multiple machines as part of its network of web servers, you could theoretically have an infinite amount of resources. And this would allow you to accommodate for large traffic spikes and a seamless experience, regardless of how many people visit your website. And it's also very simple with cloud hosting to allocate additional resources to your website. All you have to do is log into your admin console and adjust a slider to the desired resource amount, and you're good to go. It's as easy as that. And what's even better about cloud hosting is that you only pay for the resources you use. It doesn't matter if you have high traffic or low traffic. Otherwise, you might have to pay more just to accommodate for a few traffic spikes during the month, while generally your website might have very low average traffic. Despite the benefits of cloud hosting, it's not really for everyone because it takes a great deal of technical skill and knowledge to configure and set it up. It's definitely not recommended for beginners over something like shared hosting. However, you'll be happy to know that managed cloud hosting is an option that you can consider. This is similar to managed VPS and managed shared hosting, which we just discovered previously. But unlike managed shared hosting and managed VPS hosting, managed cloud is more like an additional service on top of your existing cloud hosting service. It's like an additional layer of help on top of your regular cloud hosting service to help manage everything for you. And because of this, it does cost a little bit more than just paying for your cloud hosting service by itself. But the key benefit here is that you get the advantages of cloud hosting without needing the technical knowledge to configure it for yourself. This actually makes managed cloud hosting a great option for beginners because you get a managed hosting service that's more powerful and more flexible than the typical shared hosting or basic managed hosting service. I would recommend managed cloud hosting if your website is constantly growing or if your website experiences constant amounts of high traffic spikes. For these type of websites, the benefit is that you can adjust your resources accordingly to match your exact needs. And if you're after a managed cloud hosting service, we recommend Cloudways. It provides a great range of different cloud hosting providers and it's extremely reliable. Whew. Now that covers the different types of hosting. Now I know that was a lot to take in, but I hope you're now able to understand the differences between them so that you can choose the one that suits you the most. Now let's do a quick recap and cover what we've learned today. First, we have shared hosting, which was the cheapest option. It's also a great option for beginners looking to create their first website or low traffic websites. Shared hosting has less security and weaker performance compared to the other hosting types. Second, we have VPS hosting, which gives you greater flexibility when configuring your server and resources, but you need to be tech savvy to set up and configure VPS. But if you can do that, it's a great option, especially for growing websites with lots of plugins and heavy functionality. Then we have dedicated hosting. It offers the most flexibility and security, allowing you to configure your server and hosting to your exact needs. It's also the most expensive hosting type and you should only consider it for very specific high demand use cases. We also had managed hosting, which is an add on to other hosting types. These services aid with managing and maintaining your server and website. The hosting provider handles a lot of the tedious tasks for you like backups and updates. So you can focus on the more important things. 
Lastly, we have managed cloud hosting. Cloud hosting by itself is great because it's very reliable and you have scalable resources that allow you to handle any amount of traffic that comes to your website. But managed cloud hosting is like an additional layer on top of the regular cloud hosting service and it allows you to have the benefits of cloud hosting without needing the technical knowledge to set it up. The hosting type I would recommend and the one I personally use myself is managed cloud hosting. This is because it's very flexible, it's reliable, and it gives you that peace of mind because it's managed all under a very affordable price. And if you're still unsure about which hosting type would be right for you, then don't worry because like I promised at the start of the video, I've got a little bonus for you. I've actually gone ahead and created this simple quiz where you answer a few questions and it will recommend which hosting type it thinks would be best for you. It's very easy to fill this quiz out. All you have to do is answer a few questions and at the end of the quiz, it will recommend which hosting type it thinks is best for you. If you want to try out the quiz for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure you comment down below and let me know which hosting type it recommends for you. And that's all for today. If you got value out of this video, make sure you help us out by leaving a like, subscribe down below, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our future WordPress content. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm Yaz, this is Brainstorm Force, and I'll see you in the next one.